uh, when court orders are being ignored, there will be no wrath of the law. And I, th I want us to, uh, Rogers, I want us to stick with the two issues on the table. The first issue is of impunity. The second issue that Moduma raises is about taxes and borrowing. Let us finalize on those two issues so that Kenyans are very clear what we are talking about. On the issue of impunity, His Excellency the President has a choice to make. And that the choice is this, really, or now he wants to. Uh, I've read Article 73 for Kenyans. President Ruto is not allowed to rule this country. He is allowed to have the authority to serve the interests of the Republic. Let him not push that paper and that envelope of impunity down the road, hoping that it will go away. That is my advisory to His Excellency the President. Let me speak about what Moduma speaks about when he talks about uh, uh, borrowing. I have been in the business of public debt since the year 2004. With my friend Malimu Mati and Mars Group, we did the first public forensic audit of debt in this country. Jimmy Wanjigi and my friend Omutata, the senator for Busia, have recently told the country that up to 71% of our debt is odious debt. Uru Kenyatta and his administration actually borrowed in the excess of 6 trillion shillings without authorization by the National Assembly. In the present Ruto, President Ruto has continued with the same methodology. We are all telling him that, pause, gentlemen, let us audit the debt that we owe. Because the five questions of debt fall as, as follows. Who do we owe? How much do we owe? For what did we borrow? Did the money go to the projects? And was there value for money? How much have we paid back and what are our balances? That's what we call the status of debt. Those are the five question, questions of debt when you are doing forensic audit of debt. If President William Ruto listened to what Kenya, uh, Kenya Bora is requesting and the people of Kenya are requesting, the first thing he needed to do when he came to office was to call for a national conference on the future of the economy so that we do an audit of debt. If we get the 71% of our debt, which is odious, then we are going to reduce the national budget from 3.68 trillion to 2.9 trillion, which was the request of all the people who have been giving suggestions. He defied and he did not listen. Why? Because between February and March, we've seen what this government has done. More than 300 billion of so-called, you know, infrastructure bond, which, which again is not tied to end project. So actually, under William Ruto's administration, what we are seeing is the continuation of sinking Kenya into more debt that is odious. So, Moduma, you have a good idea, but you do not understand how this thing works. That's what I'm saying. We know in great detail what the problem about debt is. If we fix odious debt, we reduce the budget to 2.9 trillion. Our revenue is now at 1.8 trillion. We reduce the hole in the budget. Okay. We do not have to borrow more, and we therefore lower taxes. I was in a conference with David Indi uh, last month, which was convened by a national uh, religious leaders conference in Limuru, and what I told David is that his economics in this regime has been turned into what we call voodoo economics, where you hope that by raising taxes, you are actually going to in, uh, repair the economy that was broken by the previous regime. So this, Moduma, this little excuse that President Ruto and the, the deputy uh, keep talking about the previous regime, the previous regime. We need to tell Kenyans the truth 
about William Ruto's administration that it has continued with the same policy of opacity, opaqueness when it comes to the borrowing because that borrowing which is not sanctioned by the National Assembly and which is not tied to projects as is required by the Public Finance Management Act is actually criminal and we must re go back to what we 